All right, we're here at the E3 Microsoft Best of Xbox show. We're joined by Jay here from Twisted Pixel. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for uh, having me on the show. Okay. Well, Local Cycle, we've heard about it, but what is it? Because this is slightly different from what I imagined. Yeah, we don't even know. We just threw a bunch of graphics at a screen and hoped that something cool came out of it, so. Uh, That's you every single game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Loco Cycle is uh, about a sentient motorcycle uh, that goes a little haywire and she decides that she doesn't want to be a piece of military technology anymore, so she wants to drive across the country and be free, but in order to do that she needs to take her mechanic Pablo along with her. Unfortunately for Pablo, he's unwilling to go, and she grabs him by his pant leg and takes him anyway, and he's literally being dragged across this entire adventure. So I'm guessing over the course of the adventure you're getting a bit of a nice growing relationship, though growing relationship is more, would you just let me go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really kind of like a action buddy comedy uh, we're going for here, only neither of the buddies understand each other. Uh, Iris's circuits have been fried and her translator is gone, so she doesn't understand a word Pablo's saying. Meanwhile, he's just screaming for his life to be let go and, and survive this trip. Well, can you sort of run us over about how the gameplay works? As we see here, it's like a third person. Is it, is it a racer? Is it a combat game? Is it a mush of the two? It's a, lot, it's a mixture of a lot of things, actually. Um, you know, we've worked in some racing elements. It's mainly, um, it's mainly a lot of, like, melee combat. She kung fu fights in the air. Um, she, she shoots uh, her adversaries on the ground. There's points when you have to play as Pablo to either repair her or aid her. So she's actually a piece of military technology from a place called uh, uh, Big Arms, which is a division of Big Science, if you remember from Explosion Man. And uh, those agents are trying to get her back because she's a very expensive piece of technology that they don't want out on the run. The way you can kind of upgrade Iris is based on her combo attacks and her performance in each level. You'll find that like at certain points within the level you're graded on your performance and obviously you want your better your grade to be better so you have better options to upgrade for uh, throughout the entire game. So we've built in the combo systems for you know for beefing up those points and really like really tricking Iris out throughout the entire game to make the gameplay even better. So yeah, so there's five different worlds and um, several several levels which in within each world, but then each level is also kind of broken up into little stages where you're graded on each stage. So again, it's really um, it's it's probably the it's definitely the biggest title we've that we've ever worked on. We've put a lot more content into this game than any of our other games. I say, yeah, because you guys seem to just be gradually scaling up. I mean, with Explosion Man, Comic Jumper and such, are you guys just basically just doing, again, what, what you enjoy rather than almost giving yourself that bar to gradually raise it come each game? We are giving our, you know, ourselves, um, like, we are doing exactly what we want to do, but we are also raising the bar on ourselves. We don't want to, we don't want to be pigeonholed into making just one thing. We always want to change the format up. Like, yeah, most of our games tend to be more of a humorous, um, style of game, but we also like pushing the envelope on stuff that we've never done before and learning how to do it and and every time learning from it to make the next the next game even better. Now, originally Xbox 360, now Xbox One. Did that just make, was that at the right time, that just made perfect sense to transfer it across as a launch game for Xbox One? Yeah, it was really a, a great opportunity. I mean, you know, we were we were full in development on this, and Microsoft came to us and said, "Hey guys, what do you think about being Xbox One?" We really didn't have to think about it much at all. It was almost a no-brainer, and uh, decided, "Yeah, let's let's do this. And let's make everything better and and really blow it out." Um, but the good news is that we still get to release an Xbox 360 version, so we will be on Xbox One at launch, and 360 will follow shortly thereafter. Okay. Uh, is there any key differences between the two versions? Uh, basically, um, so this version for Xbox One is utilizing the hardware with, you know, up res graphics. Uh, we'll be running at a full 1080p at 60 frames a second, which you obviously wouldn't get on a, a 360. Um, so, but those will be really the main differences. It's going to be the same gameplay, uh, same game across the board. We, it's just we want to we want to make sure that we reach get it out to everybody. You know, even the people that haven't upgraded to the Xbox One yet. So where are you guys now? What have you guys got left to do before release? Um, 
really not too much left. It's uh, we're pretty close to to complete here. I think we're probably in the uh, in the alpha stage right now. And uh, and sort of obviously enough, you're focusing on this title, but you mentioned there sort of like there's always something in production. I mean, you guys looking ahead beyond this release and sort of like the next couple of years. Yeah, we're you know we're not announcing what we're working on right now, but we are always working on something. Um, and you know, like I said before, we just always want to push that envelope on ourselves. Jay, thank you very much indeed for talking. Appreciate it, Gillen. Thank you so much for coming over.